Hey everyone, my name is Ryan. I'm a pastor here in Orlando, Florida, and I take questions from the internet. The internet can ask me any question they want, and I have to answer it. I've got a question today that's actually from a congregant, Miss Lily Calpe. I'm excited to read this really good question to you. She says, Ryan, I have a question. A while back, you talked about the woman who committed adultery, and she was condemned to death, but you didn't tell us what happened to the man? It's a great question. Uh, so I, I, I don't actually remember that particular sermon that you're referencing, which is, uh, oh, I guess, a good sign when my congregants remember sermons better than I do. Uh, but I assume that I was talking about the woman mentioned in John um, and the reason why I didn't tell you what happened to the man was because the Bible didn't tell us what happened to the man. Um, and, and that's actually, I think, part and parcel of the, the text there. So that's uh, from John chapter 8. And I would argue John chapter 8 is a text about texts. Um, it is a, it's not in the earliest manuscripts itself, and it features a story about the interpretation of the Old Testament law in which Jesus writes something. It's the only time we ever hear of Jesus writing things. So it's like this, this what's in the text and what's not in the text and how do you interpret it story. Uh, and so that's a really interesting question to like lay on to that story. Hey, what about this man? It takes two to tango. And so it says in the text in John 8 that she was caught in the very act of committing adultery, which seems to imply that there was a man there at the time. Uh, and of course, like it is, it is worth mentioning that this, this was unfair, right? Like the, the people who were accusing this woman and condemning her to death were being unfair to her. And Jesus ultimately said, I do not condemn you. So while she was condemned to death, or actually even technically the Pharisees didn't quite condemn her to death. They were like, well, the text says she should die. What do you think? Because I'm not going to say it because I'd get in trouble with the Romans. Like, um, but, but they wanted to condemn her to death. And she didn't get condemned uh, because there was no one there to condemn her. But since you bring it up, there's actually a really cool reading of this. And I don't know, like, y you tell me. I don't know if we can go all the way there, but I think we can at least, like, dip our toe in these waters. Because check it out. I said in that sermon that I think Jesus was leaning on uh, Deuteronomy chapter 17, right? So I, the, the answer to, like, what should happen to the man is Leviticus 20 verse 10. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death. So, I mean, that's the answer. It, it does not matter. First of all, that's directed to the man, right? Like, like it's, it's concerned about the man primarily. And we've got people here who are concerned about the woman primarily, which like, already should be a hint to us about, hey, how are these people treating the text? Um, but but also, it, it prevents the kind of, we might wonder, oh, maybe the guy got off on a technicality if she was married and he wasn't married. No, nah. -uh. It, it doesn't matter if, if it's the wife of a neighbor, um, then no good. No, you don't get away with it. Um, so if she's committing adultery, he's committing adultery. They're supposed to both be guilty. Now check this out, because I think Jesus, when he says, let he who's without sin cast the first stone, I think he's leading on Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 6 and 7. And, and I'll read that here. Um, I'm, I'm kind of uh, live translating from Hebrew with my concordance down, down here on the laptop. On the testimony of two witnesses or three witnesses, shall be put to death whoever is deserving death, not shall be put to death on the testimony of one witness. Um, and then it goes on to say, the hands of the witnesses shall be the first to put to death, and then the hands of all of the people afterward. So 
in order to put someone to death, um, Leviticus chapter 20 says you're supposed to put them to death. So if we're living by Leviticus, and I don't think we should, but those are that's the legal system of ancient Israel, which some people, especially the Pharisees, kind of thought was the ideal system, the good old days, then we also should hold to the standards of the death penalty. So there's a lot of things deserving of the death penalty, but it's also really hard to enact the death penalty in this system. So we gotta do both. We can't just do one and not the other. And it says, you, you can't just have one witness, you need to have two or three. And Jesus says, and, and those are the people that are supposed to cast the first stone, right? The witnesses. So, so who are the witnesses? It says she was caught in the very act of committing adultery. And Jesus says, I want witnesses specifically who are without sin. Now, now, theologically, we interpret that to mean witnesses who have never done anything wrong at all, or, or even people at all who've never done anything wrong at all. And we as good Christians know that that's nobody. And so this becomes like a great story about the fact that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But it's possible that in that time, in that room, in that context, not a room, outside, they would have interpreted that as, as not guilty of that sin. Not, not guilty of the sin by which you are being accused of. In other words, you can't be a witness to the sin of adultery by committing adultery. You need two or three witnesses who were not accused of the same crime to testify against someone. You can't just testify, uh, you know, uh, you, you can't just have one person testify. Um, it says not on the testimony of one witness shall anyone be condemned to death. So we need some witnesses who are without sin. We need some witnesses who aren't on trial themselves. Can we get any of those? And everybody starts putting their stones down. It's possible. I don't know if it's true, but it's possible that what happened to the man is that he was there. That he he was there in that room with that woman who committed adultery. That that he, or or maybe they, multiple men, decided after they violated their marital bow, vows that they would go ahead and get rid of this woman, get rid of the evidence, get rid of the witness. Uh, and they would do that by testifying against her. And Jesus said, is there anybody here who's like actually qualified to testify? Like, is there anybody who's who's actually without sin who can be a witness? Because we need two or three of those. And there weren't any. And so that's why Jesus said, I don't condemn you. I think that would be really interesting and fascinating if it were true. And I think that that nuance, I think that that possibility is left in the scriptures for a reason. Whenever we see um, kind of flexibility in interpretation. I don't think that that's uh, weakness of the text, that that's like uh, vagueness that just, you know, if only we'd done some more proofreading, the Bible would be better. I think that we're given that flexibility so that we can wonder about it together and appreciate it. And I hope that that answers your question. If it doesn't answer your question, feel free to ask me more. And if you are not Lily Calpy, and you've got your own question, I hope you ask me. I would love to answer your question. I've answered some other questions. You can see them here, and there are a bunch right in here. You can subscribe there and explore, see other questions I've answered. Meanwhile, I'll see you next time.